concavity in the second derivative test. Well, here we're going to talk about how the second derivative can help us when we're trying to graph a function. We're going to let f be a function whose second derivative exists on an open interval i. And the important thing to remember is that if the second derivative is positive for all the x values in that interval, then it is concave up. That means it's going like that. If the second derivative is negative for all the x's in the interval, then the graph of the function is concave down. So it's going like that. OK? So let's discuss the concavity of this function. Well, before we do any calculus, let's go ahead and distribute that x cubed. So f of x is x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. Since we want to talk about the concavity, we're going to go for the second derivative. So the first derivative is 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Now the second derivative will be 12x squared minus 24x. So let's take that second derivative and set it equal to 0. I'm going to divide by 12. I don't want to divide by 12x because I would lose one of my answers. I can factor out an x. OK, now let's do a sign chart for the second derivative, f double prime of x. So this will be like a number line here. And at x equals 0, the second derivative is 0. And at x equals 2, the second derivative is 0. Let's pick a point to the left of 0, say negative 1. If I put negative 1 in for x there, that's a negative. Negative 1 minus 2 is also a negative. A negative times a negative, positive. So for any x value that is less than 0, this function is concave up. OK, now let's pick a number between 0 and 2, like 1. That will become positive, but 1 minus 2 is negative. And so a positive times a negative is negative. So the graph of the function between 0 and 2 is something concave down. Finally, pick a point greater than 2, say 3. That's positive. 3 minus 2 is also positive. A positive times a positive is positive. So we're back to concave up. OK, so we can say that this is concave up for these intervals from negative infinity to 0 and 2 to positive infinity. It's concave down from 0 to 2. OK, so now let's define a new term, namely point of inflection. A graph, if a graph changes concavity at some point at c comma f of c, then that point is called a point of inflection. In other words, if f double prime of c is equal to 0, or f double prime of c doesn't exist, and it changes sign over c, then that c comma f prime f of c is a point of inflection. So let's find all points of inflection for this function. Once again, we're going to go for the second derivative. And to get there, we have to take the first derivative. That's so going to be 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. Taking our second derivative, we're going to get 6x minus 12. Let's set that equal to 0. I get x minus 2. So we have one place where the second derivative is equal to 0, and that's at 2. So let's pick a point to the left, like 0. OK, so 6 times 0 minus 12 is negative. And pick a point greater than 2, like 3. 6 times 3 minus 12 is positive. So we have one point of inflection 
at 2 comma, and let's figure out what f of 2 is. f of 2, remember I'm putting this into the original function, that's going to be 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 squared plus 12 times 2. So that's 8 minus 24 is negative 16, or actually it's going to be 8, right? Because I have minus 24 plus 24. So it's 2 comma 8 is where our point of inflection is. Okay, so how else can the second derivative help us? Well, let's say that we have a function such that f prime of c is 0 and the second derivative at c exists. If the second derivative is positive, it has a relative minimum, which makes sense when you think about it, because, because if f double prime of c is positive, it's concave up, and if prime of c is 0, we know we've got a relative maximum or minimum. Well, the only way you can have a relative max or min with a concave up is to have it at the bottom, so it's got to be relative min. Likewise, if the second derivative is negative, it's concave down. The first derivative is 0, so we've got that situation, so you have a maximum. Now, if the second derivative equals 0, the test is inconclusive and you have to do more work, namely the first derivative test. So let's find all relative extreme of this function here. So I'm going to do the first derivative first. So it's going to be 1 third x cubed, that's 3x squared over 3 plus 4x plus 3 and we get x squared plus 4x plus 3 which factors into x plus 3 x plus 1 so we have two critical points at x equals negative 3 and negative 1 now let's take the second derivative. That's going to be 2x, hang on a minute, let me erase that, put my equal sign in here, 2x plus 4. Okay, so our critical points on our sign chart are at negative 3 and negative 1 and I want to know what is the second derivative doing at those points. So right below it, I'll do my sign chart for my second derivative at my critical points. And so if I put in negative 3, that's going to be negative 6 plus 4 is negative. Put in negative 1, that's going to be negative 2 plus 4, which is positive. So I've got a concave down at that point and a concave up at that point, which means that I have a relative max at x equals negative 3 and a relative min at x equals negative 1. And if I wanted to get those y values, of course, I would put them into the original function. So that's called the second derivative test.